In this video, we're going to look on a little bit more in-depth ecosystem and primarily how the layer interact between each other, how we can utilize and what we can do to create more natural look in our environment. So for this, we'll go into select and create a plane, just a surface where they're going to place some objects. So I'm going to stretch up and I want to be sure it is located on a, our surface and just move a little bit so we can preview everything and you know what let's go to put it a flat white so we can preview what's going on so next i'm going to open material editor and you notice i'm in advanced material editor if you are in a basic mode just click on this check on the box advanced material editor button so now we have access to all the tabs that we needed uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're creating ecosystem, it will replace some layers. So what I was meaning, if you just have it plain white as base and you go check down and says, hey, I want ecosystem particles, it will just create additional layer and it add a new layer. However, let's delete this layer. If, for example, I'm going in here and I creating new layer and I work on this layer cleaning my own new material and after I says you know what I want to add ecosystem so in this case if you're going and says let's ecosystem particles it's won't create new layer what it does it will replace whatever you created with ecosystem and this need keep it in mind when you add all these layers so it will replace whatever you have. So for my recommendation, almost any time when you want to create new layer, create new layer and from drop down box, select which one you want to be, what type. Hopefully that small tip will help at least you to avoid some last of the work. So anyway, right here we have it first ecosystem layer and you know what, let's add some item. And I'm going to use it objects and we'll just go use it a red orb okay if we're going to populate you can see it's populate quite a bit all over place even right here you know what, let me shrink just a little bit this view so we'll have it our camera preview and most important we also have it our top view so we can see what's going on there and it says a little bit too much population for me so i'll take density down Okay, we'll populate, still be a lot. And one thing I want to avoid overlapping instance. That way they will be just single. Mm, I still think it's a little bit too many of them. So let's reduce even more. So we have just very few. And this is normal population on that. If we look, we have it right here, our affinity with the layers and it's a gray out because we don't have any ecosystem layer below this and they need to interact. For this, let's go create new layer and we'll switch this layer into the ecosystem. Let's go to add new object. In this case, I'm just like a green color balls. And if we're going populate, you'll notice they are populate all over places because no interactions in just like one ecosystem over another ones. What we're we going to do is decrease our density a little bit. And let's also drop down scaling. So populate and we can see we have a lot of all um, all over places. You know, it might be scaling a little bit too small. So let's go ahead now go back to general tab and you notice right here distribution, it is available for us. Because now we can interact with ecosystem layer below. Let's do the first things. Let's say affinity with the layer above. Notice right here we have our red balls from layer below and we'll just pop up affinity quite a bit high, click populate. Notice what's happening. They kind of start going around closer to our previous location. Think about this. Maybe you have it one type of the object like rock and you want smaller rocks around this, or maybe you want to have it plant and going under plant. For example, if we take our tree and let's go just populate even less of them. Okay. And we'll take our tree and under tree I want to create for example grass or leaves falling or anything so by using affinity I can tell hey populate just around those trees 
So let's go pop up density, click populate, little bit more. And you can see how they're populating just around right here. You can see how they're going around this. Okay, so this is one way. What's happening if we just remove affinity back to zero and put repulsion? Let's go click populate. It's quite a bit all over the place, it's not so close to them. Maybe we need to increase repulsion. Let's go click populate, and you can see they kind of start going away. They're pushing them out. So we can pop up 200%. And that is a little bit too much. So the zones around them creating too much. We need to find right spot for this. And this is take a little bit experiment for you to see which one will work better. But it's very easy to have a few tries. I think 95% should work very well here. There you go. Now, the, again, we can use it, this one if we want to populate like a grass or flowers, for example. We don't want flowers, put it under trees, those who like sunlight, for example. We can make the flowers going on open areas, not around the trees. But here's the things. A problem is with the ecosystem layer, it is interact with layer below. We currently, I don't think, have an ability to tell with what layer we want to interact. Maybe future versions will add this, but right now we don't have it. But what we can do is create another layer, convert to, again, ecosystem. And in this layer, let's go to add another object. We'll just have it this blue. Again, we'll reduce a little bit density. We'll drop down and populate. And what we can, we can also repulse from layer below and that will push them towards the plant or we can opposite we can other ones affinity with a layer above and repulse so we can still kind of work between those layers because if you notice our green does not fill up inside so if we're going in here and have the repulsion here and populate you'll notice the blues stay just by the trees they kind of staying away from a green area Again, we can also make it a little bit easy to view. Just let's go enable overlay, disable overlay on both of them. That way we can see kind of a little bit easy how the distribution work. And here we can just go like right there and notice what's happening. Now we have it in this area where we don't have it green. We can still blue and they're closer to the tree. So now we have this distribution and specific areas. Again, now think about this. A red can be a tree, the falling leaves can be around as a blue, and a flowers or grass can be other areas. So now we're controlling with system. Remember, all of this is dynamically generated, so it's all random. And we literally can create a billions of the instance of this. So if you want to create a forest or other things. And instead of spheres, you can have it a multiple collections of different flowers, plant or other elements. This is what nice things about creating. The also affinity is have it negative or positive. So let's go ahead and clear these ones. We'll go back to the green and look what we can do here. So what's happening if we have it Repulsion zero, it's populated everywhere. Affinity with the layer will pop up in and it's going closer. So what's happening if we're going in negative? And we'll populate. And you notice it's almost work as a repulsion. It's not necessarily work exactly as a repulsion because we still have it sometimes a little bit closer, but it is kind of pushing slightly away. You can kind of work with between these two elements and properly adjust more um, what you're looking for. So let's go ahead, for example, repulsion, let's go 100% off. And you can see repulsion, for example, does not clump them together. They just overlay everywhere. So keep this in mind. Repulsion not necessarily will work as affinity, bring them to this. It's a just does not uh, remove any effect of this. Let's go ahead back to the zero. Okay, so this is kind of nice. And you know what? Let's actually add affinity a little bit more for our next things. 
the interesting things about Vu and specific ecosystem, you can actually have it to quite a bit fun by just doing different effect. For example, let's go look on some properties that we have it right here. We have it our okay main material. Let's switch here. We have it our of course density. We can populate tail and interesting things we can stack. Stacking work very good. It's a one placed on top. Right now you notice they don't place one on top another one. If we're going in red and it says allowed stacking and click populate, look what's happening. <laughs> Just populate all over places. And now we can play with the rocks or other elements and we can place them all over elements as we need it. But this has come up even more fun if we start experimenting. So let me disable stacking for now. Okay, so it's going around. We're going to first material blue. And one right here you can see we can have it um, specify if we want above or below surface to do this. So let's say if we want to go and pop up maybe just a little bit up, you can see the object now floating. If we go in one above and populate, it's still kind of populate but below them because they are kind of floating but it's going under them. If we allow stacking and populate it, some of them going above, some of them going below, but they're all going around this. And this is fun, but we have it kind of on one same level. We can take this to the next kind of level on this. So let's go original and we'll just reset to zero here. But what I want to use is a function editor. Let's go click and open our function editor. In function editor right here with the offset, I want to have a little bit dynamic. I want to have it kind of different. So I'll go to fractal. We'll use it simple fractal and a fractal output number from minus one to one or zero to one, sorry, black to white. And for properly going to our offset, I want to use it map. And a map is allowed me to control input and control output values. So I'm going to control connect to my map inside the map. I says input from zero to one. But the output I want from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. You notice what is happening. Let's take this value and map it them in this range. Next, we're going to connect to offset and we don't need this constant anymore. Let's go back to advance to our other tab and click populate. Notice what's happening here. They're all random going up and down on different effect. Now, uh, when we're creating ecosystem like this population, think about this. What if you go and can create a floating leaves or butterflies or any other things in your scenery? You can easily replace those object spheres with any other animated even objects and put it inside here. So you'll have it some more for your scenery. Of course, all of this can be easy animated as well. Okay, so next we create this. Let's go see what's happening when we have it one layer created before and we still have it our stacking enable. Let's go click populate. And you notice some of them going on top, some going below and so on. Of course, we do not apply any of the animation, um, any of the Z or height to them. So on the side, you can see they just populated like everywhere. By the way, this is also nice thing. So if you can take meta blobs and instead green blob, you can create a, a meta material as a snow. So you can place it snow. And I think I even have it some video somewhere how to do this. Okay, so we have this one. And of course, our this layer, if we're populating, it will just populate below because it's not stacking. It's going just under there. And let's go look what we have here. We have it repulsing from other layers. So it will go around. And I think what we need to do, we need it. Uh, let's switch this to affinity. So we'll go right there, populate. And there you go. So they're kind of populating almost by the green, but only non stacking on the top of this. Of course, we can go inside the green as well. There are other balls and we can go do something similar what we've done in the previous. So we'll go fractal create simple fractal, 
go to filters, select map, connect them, okay. connect to offset, go inside the map and switch 0 to 1 and here maybe 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So we'll just have it a little bit actually, uh, 0 0.1, maybe like this. Okay, uh, let's delete this node, we don't need it, go back and click populate. And what's happening now, you can see the all floating as well, the stocking and floating. So you can have a lot of lot of fun with uh, creating and interactions between ecosystem. I hope you found this video is interesting and inspiring you to explore more Vue with a different ecosystem, create different effects, water splashes, um, floating rocks, floating islands with the plants, whatever is common in your imaginations, butterflies, leaves, dandelions blowing, um, clouds. It's a very lot of things you can create. But overall, um, just try to play a little bit more with interactions, see how layers work, and have fun. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have more questions.